Hey everyone, it's Sifu Tommy. In this little series of films, I'd like to give you a little insight into my Wing Chun journey and also a little bit uh, the journey of the, or the, the history of the European Wing Chun, because I know a lot of you are interested in that. Um, personally, I began my Wing Chun journey in 1991 um, under a student of Grandmaster Kernspechts in Germany, which is where I'm originally from. And uh, I only had the chance to train once a week back then, and that was something that I never really liked, so I looked for another school relatively early. Um, I was lucky that from the very start of my uh, Wing Chun journey, I, w I had a training partner in my old friend uh, Sifu David, David Martin. And um, so after finding a school in the city of Düsseldorf, where I was actually able to go there and uh, take my bike there, because back then I was a high school kid, and um, I took my bike there, uh, which was like a one hour journey, or I sometimes I actually was able to take that bike on a bus in order to get there. There I was able to train for four hours a day. I think it was, I think they offered training like uh, four times a week for like four hours. So I did this for a while. And it turned into a situation where my parents were not happy with the grades that I brought back from school. And they were like, no, no you either find a new school or, um, yeah, you're going to have to stop Wing Chun entirely, which made me look for another school. And um, I found that under students, uh, a student of Sifu Emin Bots Tepes. Um, some of you guys may still be familiar with him. He used to be the um, American uh, national director for the EWTO, the European Wing Chun Association uh, organization, or for the IWTA, which is Grandmaster Leung Ting's International Wing Chun Association. And he used to be the national director for the States back then, and he's from Germany as well. So I, trained, I got to train with him in the subsequent years quite intensively. Um, after this, I started training at Langenzell Castle. Some of you guys may have heard of the famous Wing Chun Castle, uh, which is uh, close to the city in Heidelberg. And uh, the EWTO back in the days had their headquarters there. And I was lucky enough to make friends with some of the uh, to make friends with some of the instructors there, and therefore had the chance to train there. And uh, back in the day, they trained up to eight hours every day, uh, seven days a week. It was a very very intense period of 12 years, where all the people did over there was uh, uh, just train Wing Chun and refine it and test it and uh, yeah then then teach it um, so I was lucky to be able to tra train there for about six years um, in 1991 is when I began and in 1995 is when I already uh, became a full-timer I was doing an apprenticeship at the time and um, I met somebody who actually uh, made his money doing Wing Chun and that was like the thing that I wanted to do and I remember vividly, it was um, the day when uh, we had a Christmas celebration at our Wing Chun school. And my Si Hing, my older Wing Chun brother, told me that he was looking for somebody to take over the group that I was training in myself. And uh, that uh, he wanted to ask me if this is something that was out of the question for me. And uh, I was completely thrilled and I wasn't able to sleep on that day. I was 18 years of age. I just got my driver's license. And um, you can imagine this was winter time in Germany and we had like three feet of snow. Uh, and me just being brand new with my driver's license, uh, wanting to get to that instructor. Cause like I, like I said, I couldn't sleep during the night. And um, I just wanted to uh, get to him and get all the information that I could possibly get in order to, uh, to learn what was necessary to do Wing Chun full time as a job. So I tried to call him the whole day, wasn't able to get, get hold of him. Uh, so I just asked my father, I said, hey, I have to get to the city of Lindlar, which was like 35 kilometers away from where I lived, and I asked him where that was. And he told me the approximate direction. It was before the time of, uh, of cell phones, before the time of GPSs. So uh, it was kind of um, interesting for me to go there as a young kid, you know, in three feet of snow. And uh, for these... 30 miles or so. It took me one and a half hours to actually get there. And then I knocked on his door. I, I rang the doorbell and he opened the door and he's like, what the heck are you doing here? Because I wasn't able to get him right before that and re to reach him before that. And I said, the thing that you do, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. What do I have to do in order to make this happen? And then he said, well, you're officially crazy. Come inside. Um, here's a hot, here's a hot cocoa. Let's just sit down. And I explain something to you. And this is pretty much what started my Wing Chun journey. We, I just sat down and I just took notes and notes and notes and notes. And the very next day I quit my job at the apprenticeship and I started uh, teaching Wing Chun full time. Took over that class, uh, wasn't able to financially support myself in the beginning. I was lucky that I was able to stay at my parents' place or to live at my parents' place at that day. And I started working as a bouncer, as a uh, salesman. I sold, I was a bartender. I, uh, there's a lot of things that I did in order to support my Wing Chun journey. Um, and uh, it got to a point where I was finally able to 
um, make enough money so that I was able to just purely do Wing Chun. Um, that was around 1995. So 1995, I became a full-time instructor and I was lucky enough to meet the people at uh, Langenzau Castle. So some of the instructors, that's another question that I get quite, quite often is who were your instructors? Um, pretty much the first generation of teachers that I trained with all came under uh, Grandmaster Lin Ting. Uh, Grandmaster Kernspech, Keith, Keith Kernspech is my Sifu, my, um, my father teacher. And then I had a number of Sihings, starting with uh, Sifu Emin Botstepe, um, uh, Sifu Hans Peter Edel, Sifu Thomas Schroen, and uh, Sifu Heinrich Pfaff. And with uh, some of them I still associate and have uh, strong friendships, and we still train with each other.